Let's do a little bit of object-oriented programming with C++. First, introducing you the general high-level steps that need to be done. So you should define a class by doing an object-oriented model. I know it's not easy to do it right. It can, there are many variants of doing it and you need some more practice, but let's assume we are doing this. So what we know is that a class is a group of objects with the same data and, and methods. So you have instances of a class, right? And they have all the same data and methods, class of students, class of cars, what have you. But next you have to define the members, which are the variables that belong to each object, which is a class instance, right? Like each student should have a matricle number. Each student should have a birthday. Each car should have this and this. Once we've done the members, we should define the operations, which are in respect to object-oriented programming called methods, because they belong to each object. They are more than just a function. Methods belong to an object and an object has access to its members and operations. Okay, this, the cl this classes that you've done with object-oriented model, potentially drawing it, it should now be coded in a separate header file. Once this is done, you need to implement the class functions, which are our operations or methods, right? This is typically done in a separate C++ file, but they can also be integrated into the header file for convenience, for simpler classes, for example. Now, lastly, you need to use and make good use of this um, new created class, which is your new object-oriented model. You need to include the header file. You need to instantiate the objects either on the stack or on the heap. Let's get through all these steps now on an example. So what we are doing is we will be modeling a car. And we remember classes model objects, attributes are data members, and behavioral is encoded as methods, which are member functions. Yeah. So let's think about what is important about a car. And there are many things that could be added, and here is just some little bit basics. So in terms of data, we could think about a car as a color, right? And a color could be a string, which is one of these new types in C++. A car has also a license number, which could be an integer. Let's assume it. So we call it int registration, and a color is string color, meaningful, right? Now in terms of operations, what we want to do is maybe we want a way to retrieve getting the license number or the color, setting the license number or color. These are kind of very basic methods. So first, we remember we have to declare a class in a header file. So we create a header file, car.hpp. In this case, we included a namespace. Typically, you shouldn't do that, but let's do it for um, the sake of simplicity. So we are working in very small projects. So to create a new class, we have to say class and give it a name. Similar to struct something, we have class something. Okay. Next, we, we will introduce the visibility, public. We say here, all those data and methods, they can be accessed by everyone. We will talk about those details of visibility later. So just for now, assume public means everyone can access the data and the methods, which is what we want for now. So we, we said in terms of data, we need registration and color. So they are here declared, similar to a struct. Then we want to have methods. We wanted to have get registration to get the number, right? The plate number. Get color to get a string of the color. To set the registration, need getting a new registration number, setting a color, the new color, right? So these are our methods and this is our data. So we modeled it. Let's implement it now. We Here in this case, we implement it in the header file. So, well, we have to make a little bit of change only for the methods, because the methods now need to be implemented, which means we have to define them with their body and their code that needs to be provided. So when we say get registration, what we want to do is we want to return basically the registration number here, right? In get color, we want to return the color. Okay, so whenever you have an instance now, an instance of a car has a very own registration and an own color. So this function get registration, which is not a function, just a pure function, it is 
a method of an object of car, it returns a specific from a specific instance, a specific registration number and a specific color of this instance. Okay. Also, SEC registration is able to access those variables here as similar to global variables, but they are local to a car. So class, those kind of class variables, the class variables, um, they, this data exists for each instance of the car separately. So let's have a look how we use it and trying to understand this concept. So what we need to do when we use objects, we have to instantiate them. This is the process of creating a new instance of an object. In our case, each object is an instance of the car, class car with its own data members. So we have a car, car one here and a car, car two. Those are two different cars now, right? Two different variables, which of this type car. To access members and functions, it's the same as for accessing struct members in C. So we can say car one dot set color for example blue so now this would call the code here set color and sets color to be the respective color which is blue but now it would set the value of this variable here only for the instance car one yeah that we have declared here and when we have a car two we say set color red we have another car which color is red and now we could print the values here we have direct access to the data member, so we can say car1.color gives us the value of the string here for the color of the car. So this would of course print now blue, because that's what we set it to. When we say car2.getColor, we would get red, because that's the value we set. Okay, you really have to understand that those instances, they are different as the variables of a struct that you instantiate, they bear different values of their members. So to compile this code, well, we just call G++, which is similar to GCC, but here it's, well, GNU C++ compiler. And then we execute this code, we would get exactly as expected, blue and red. Now I really try to understand this what's going on here when we call a, f a, f a method on an instance pretty much the scope that we saw here in this code the scope is of that specific instance yeah so whenever a, fu a function uh, what we would normally would call a function um, would access a variable that is part of a class instance we it is specific and different for each instance. And that's why it's called method compared to this idea of a function. Yeah, You can have in C++ still normal functions, but they are not bound to an object. Right, um, well, pointers actually, they remain important in C++, or by it we have call by reference. And uh, the concept is the same to C, when you try to access something that is a pointer from a class, you would use the arrow operation. So now what we want to do is when we create an object, we can create this object on the heap, similar than when we used malloc and free in C. We now, however, have to use new functions, syntax, new syntax in fact, it's called new and delete which are slightly different used than malloc and free because these are not functions anymore. So let's have a look. We say here car one is a pointer to a car. And when we try to assign car one, we, we have to create a new car. And this will now be stored on the heap. Yeah, this extra area where, which a programmer has to manage. Now we assign it to car one. This is similar to using malloc, but it does a little bit more, what we will learn in the future, to ensure that this object is correctly constructed. Now we can, on this object, we can call car1 set color blue. So whatever car1 points to, this object we set the color to be blue. 
Now we can print the color again, works as before. And when we remove it, instead of calling free, we now we use this syntax calling delete car one. So this is analog to new. This removes delete, removes wherever car one pointed to. Okay, that was a really a quick introduction to C++. I hope you um, try to catch up because we will quickly ramp up kind of the skill in terms of syntax and semantics. To wrap up today's lecture, C++ is basically C with extensions. And an object-oriented program is a collection of objects and their interactions. We, we saw that files are named differently due to some incompatibilities with C. We looked at a couple of new concepts today, streams, namespaces, functions, in particular function overloading, which means you can have the same name, slightly different signature of the parameters, arguments, we can have default arguments, we can have call by reference now using the ampersand, and we looked at a very basic object-oriented program with classes. There are more C++ programs available. As usual, you find them in our portfolio. I wish you a great week and talk to you next week.